a second time. Uh, the Honourable Sophia Mamond. Thank you, Acting President. Um, so, first, I would like to say that the uh, regulation of this market is very much a need, and I'm glad that's being uh, addressed. I'd also like to note that the consultation process was quite extensive, with over 350 submissions uh, received. I'm not quite sure how that was done, but I'm very, uh, I'm very pleased to see that, and I hope that that sort of engagement uh, continues over other policies as well. Now, I grew up in the Netherlands, uh, where it was the norm to rent. So it was very unusual for people to actually own their own house there, and you certainly wouldn't own more than one house unless you were very wealthy and rent one out. Um, there were organisations in charge that rented out the homes there, and often people would li live in that particular house for 20 or 30 years uh, as it suited their needs. Uh, there was flexibility around owning pets uh, and being able to decorate your house. Uh, I remember my parents putting in uh, very fancy wooden floors, I think in the 70s when they were in fashion. Um, and I don't ever recall that we had rent inspections. So now I understand the need for a property to be protected. Um, I get that. But at the same time, it's quite invasive too. Now how that was managed in the Netherlands was that people would build up a score over the years. Um, and if you had a bad score, it would be very hard for you to find a, uh, a rental. So, um, Currently, yeah, you know, people having um, landlords come in at inconvenient times, come in when uh, it wasn't agreed for them to come, uh, pop in when the person isn't there. Those are really quite gross invasions of privacy. And I, I do believe that that needs to be managed better overall. Now, in regards to this um, legislation, there are three points that I think uh, need to be addressed. One is to have capped rent increases. I've come across several case studies where people were simply priced out of their home. They couldn't afford to pay the increases and had to find somewhere else to live. Now, when you look at people having to move frequently for whatever reason, it really destabilizes that particular household. You're looking at children needing to move schools more frequently, which has tends to have poorer learning outcomes. You're also looking at people losing their community, uh, and part of that community can be social vigilance, uh, which um, can help people uh, cope better at home if they know that uh, you know someone's not able to go shopping, you're in a community, someone's aware of that, you can get help much easier. Um, social vigilance can be there as well in regards to managing people's problems beha problem behaviours where you look at, uh, you know, you haven't been seen for a while, a neighbour might check up on you, uh, make sure that you have access to uh, a doctor or call an ambulance or whatever. And when you really find, when you find that people move a lot, that sense of community is lost and that social vigilance is lost as well. Now, in the Netherlands, how they deal with that is they make sure that uh, social vigilance is kind of built into the community. So when they set up a neighbourhood, they uh, put different uh, types of housing in there. So there'll be social housing with different uh, rent points. There will be private homes there as well, which has become more popular lately, um, just to make sure that they attract a diverse population to a particular neighbourhood. Um, what that means for low socioeconomic uh, groups is generally that they get lifted up in that neighbourhood because everybody else is trying to make their garden look nice and so there is pressure on people to conform like that as well. Um, the other, uh, yeah, so, sorry. The stability of renting is good if you can have a long-term rental. The other thing that has been picked up as well is that um, we need to make sure that when a house is, uh, a property is advertised, 
that the rent that is stated there, that the amount is stated there, is the actual amount. Not that when people go in and say, oh, I can pay $100 more per week or so, uh, or so. I mean, I realise that's attractive to the, uh, to the owner of the property, but it also means that you're wasting people's time. People look, they can afford this, they come along and then realise that somebody can pay uh, $100 more. And that, I think that's unfair and I don't think we should be wasting time like that for people. And the third point is no cause evictions are still allowed. Um, and once again, I think that's very destabilising to people. Um, there has to be a cause, really. I understand that people might lose their house because they don't look after it, they can't afford it, they have damaged it, uh, but no cause evictions are simply unfair. Thank you. Sorry? Yes. No. Sorry. Absolutely. Uh, those that are on a low housing score, where do they end up? Uh, they usually end up in um, poorer areas uh, in that sense, yeah. So you can still... Um, there are still areas that are prone to social problems due to, to poverty, you still get that. But they're trying to prevent that by making sure that every new suburb has that range of homes in different price classes in it. Yeah.